Welcome to the Satellite of Love. My name is Joel, and I've fashioned my two robot friends, Tom and Crow, into an at-home shooting gallery. It does get boring up here. Stop talking and start chalking. As you could probably tell from the opening the Mads made, I'm marooned up here in space without much chance of ever really getting home. Something is wrong on Saturn 3. Anyway, they monitor our responses to watching really bad movies, and then they sell the results to cable TV. Five seconds, seconds to commercial, commercial sign. sign. Say, partner, that's a mighty fancy shooting. Thank, thank you. Commercial sign in five, four, three, two, commercial sign now. We'll be right back. The World 4. Hey, everybody. I Look, I changed the robots to Apple Dumpling Gang mode. Draw, Tim Conway. Uh, er, uh, jeepers, uh, uh, sorry about getting the uh, ketchup on your scarf, Mr. Mr. Black Bark. Can I, can I call you Bark? Is that okay with you? Uh, uh, gee, I'll, I'll get some soda water and uh, clean that right up. There. Ow, 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 ow. Now your turn, Don Knotts. I'll have you know these hands have to be registered as lethal weapons with the Mountain Pilot Police Department. And when in Los Angeles, visit Universal Studios. Oh, you guys, wake up. The Mads are calling. Come on, get up. Oh, oh, oh. Hi. Hello, Hi. evil over under overlords. Oh, shut your mouth, Pollyanna Prod, and show us your invention exchange. And don't dawdle, Amaryllis. Do you mean me? No, him, beefaroni. Well, sirs, today's invention exchange is based on the old premise of this age-old gag, the bang gun. Uh, it's not that great. Not really that much fun. So I took that premise and based it on this new bang Uzi. Wow. See, you can point it directly at someone. Oh, and wow. if you do it right... Real arcade action. Give me two. Well... Kaboom. Uh, very funny. We can do better than that. In fact, we've come up with this harpoon gun with appropriate noise. Start running, Frank. Oh, I hate this one. Dunk. Funny, huh? Well, hey, sirs. Here's a knife adapted to the same purpose. Slink. Well, balls in your court. Balls in our court. I'll show you balls. Frank uh, has got some nunchucks using the same tired premise. Hey, Kiba. Things are done, Bob. Well, here's a stick of dynamite. Just light the fuse. Oh, I can't hold my ears. And. Oh. Ka chow Ka chow What is Don Martin working with you guys now? Frank, get the plunger ready. Well, your experiment this week, Joel, is a TV movie called Stranded in Space. It's a real stinker, and I'm sorry, but if I don't do it, someone else will. Finish him off, Frank. Boingy banga kabonga!
Was that bingo, bango, kabongo? That was weird. Boingy, bango, kabongo. No, make oh. it stop. It's being seen through the eyes of Yul Brynner and Westworld here. You know, already this movie's like going to the dentist. Kind of. <laughs> All right, your order is 525. Please drive forward to the first window. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I don't think we should get wrapped up in these credits. I'm sure they have nothing to do with the movie. Mm hmm. Oh. Hmm. Shrinky dinks. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. I think I see Charles Foster Kane's slut in there. In Xanadu. Time to start thinking about me, Steve Franken. Jim Conway, Dwarf in Space. Or Tim O'Connor. Whoop. Oh, damn, rollerblades. I can't stop it. I don't know how it works. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye. Hmm. Hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, that's bad luck. Three on a transporter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, see, what did that have to do with the movie? Nothing. You know, I just had the craziest dream. And you were there, and you, Tim? No, that one doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> Everything checks out okay. And so do I. <laughs> now, let's see if we can strand this baby. Houston, this is Patriot. Reading you loud and clear, Neil. Steve's checked and rechecked the transponder. We can't find anything wrong with it on this end. Roger. Looks like you'll have to continue performing your correction burns using your onboard computer. And using those sideburns we set you up with. Roger. At least our computer seems to be functioning okay. Oh, those are the lotto numbers. In case Ooh. we can't locate the problem down here, you should be close enough in about seven days for us to skin paint you on our radar. Skin paint? Roger. <laughs> well, I'll try anything After once. All this time in deep space, I guess we can wait another week. Good one. Everything else all right up there? <laughs> Aside from the fact we're not 100% sure we're on the right trajectory, everything's great. And we ran out of oxygen two days ago. We'll keep in touch. We'll be here. So, whose turn was it? Hey, it's I Dream of Genie. Mm. Hey, was that us? I never thought I'd consider 26,000 miles an hour slow. Until I popped a Dexa trim. You get the feeling Mike's a little anxious to get home? A well, new bride can do that to you. Especially when you haven't had a chance to take her on a honeymoon. Don't worry. I'll make up for it when I get back. And how? <laughs> He's right, folks. Watch out for that one. Whoa. What's on the menu, Junior? There's a real pretty sight. Yeah, yeah when that transponder veiled. It's a universal I picture. I really sure it's it again. It makes two of us. Oh, that's three, Steve. Mike, how about a nice, thick, juicy... Seizure! Oh, ah! oh was that in the food tube? Must be time for class. Huh? Houston, this is Patriot. Yeah, who needs a honeymoon, man? <laughs> We're having Ray Bolger practice. Wow. <laughs> We're doing acting improv. We're bacon. 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 Meanwhile, on Trapper John. Hey, maybe we'll see Chad Everett. <laughs> uh, thanks for the horse, Mary Lou. It's Directing her in there. Hi. Fred McMurray wants his slippers back. More telegrams. You think they'd be out of paper by now? I wish you had toilet paper in this room. Can I get you anything? I bought a room with a view. Or a pretty woman? Oh, I'm afraid there are no windows in this wing of the hospital. Sunlight interferes with post radiation studies. Besides, you'll be well enough to leave here soon. Straight scoop. Double dip. Oh. In the meanwhile, there are all these beautiful flowers. They keep coming in by the truckload. They're all poppies. <laughs> oh my God, you're ugly. 
Well, how's our number one patient? Uh, he just went number two, doctor. Us, doctor. Yes, I blame him. How do you feel? You tell me. You're, You're making excellent progress. Good, then I can get out of here soon. Soon? Mm -hmm. It's not as though it were a prison, you know. What would you call it, Dr. Revere? Call me Paul. The two weeks I've been here, I haven't been allowed outside this room. I can't have visitors use the telephone or read a newspaper. I've been cut off from the outside world, and you tell me it's not like I'm in prison. You've been through a terrible experience. But I'm still in one piece. I can get around. I know. Physically, you're in better condition than we could have hoped, but... But what? Emotionally. You'll always be a little girl. What about emotionally? It just takes time. You've been a member of the space program long enough to understand that. I don't know what I understand anymore. All I know is I haven't seen one familiar face since I got back. And you're as much a stranger to me as anyone. That's pretty good. There are many people in this end of the program you've never come in contact with. What about our flight surgeon? Uh, we had to shoot him. He? he had a broken leg. Dr. Bellman is dead, Neil. He died of a heart attack while you were still in space. We didn't want to disturb you with it. I'm sorry. Jello? Look, I give you my word that it won't be long before you'll be reunited with the outside world and well, with your family and friends. You know, all that crap. We need you back in space. You're much too valuable to be stuck in here. In the meantime, reports concerning your health are being let out at And so is your gal. <laughs> you know that there are people all over the world concerned about your well-being? I told you, didn't I? The president himself insists upon being the first one to speak to you on the telephone. Hmm? What what the, what, so all of a sudden he's a cable show? Keep him informed. And fuzzy. Steve. Boston. Sort of. Okay, we're ready to lay in the background vocals now. You're from there, are you? Hmm? Hmm? I'm sorry? Bless you. You don't speak Russian, doctor? No. Nice try, Astro Spy. I smell a rat, a big coming Ready? rat. Can I have some borscht, Dr. Stalin? You find these have been helping you relax? Yeah, but I haven't been sleeping well lately. But now, uh, now the arm. Yeah. Keep having these strange mm. dreams. Mm. About the mission? About everything that's ever happened to me. Mm. It's like I'm reliving my life over again in my sleep, even the smallest details. Only Cameron Mitchell's there. And I've got the feeling I've been talking in my sleep, too. And wedding. <laughs> Sorry. No. Our nurses are trained to be discreet. Say, I think I'll test that yeah, theory. I, I told you this. The fact that you survived and your fellow astronauts perished, that makes it all the more traumatic for you. Mm -hmm. But these nightmares, they'll, they'll pass. So will your suspicions and your fears. And your kidney stones. You're getting better, Colonel. Just takes time. The check's in the mail. <laughs> oh, say, I've got a surprise for you. Hmm. You know a man named Tony Angelo? Yeah, he owns a restaurant in Boston. Well, he's flying some fresh scrot out here for you. Yeah, scrot. Yeah. your yeah. favorite fish. Yeah. Well, Tony ought to know he served me enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a little luck, it'll be here for dinner. Speaking of Boston, Dr. Revere. I'm not Russian. Are you any relation to Paul? Paul Revere? And the Raiders? No, I don't think so. Oh, but I know Davy Jones. Oh, it doesn't matter. Paul Revere wasn't much of a ball player anyway. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm as ignorant of sports as I am languages. And history and sociology and. It's at 11 here at Comedy Central. Up for tonight. Now, watching this guy sleep is making me tired. Look, I'm his father and I can... Oh. The more patient we are with him now, the more cooperative he'll be in the future. You know what I mean? Doctor, do you really think that he believes he's home? He believes he's at a Motel 6. Well, I think he has some doubts. Well, I have some doubts too, Doctor. Especially about the way you're handling this. You think you're the All only one who hurts? questions about his past. These questions have helped me to eliminate most of his suspicions. Most, but not all. No, no. No, no, no. It's no. only a matter of time now before he figures what hey. we're doing to him. But until then, 
Think of what we're learning about their space program. And about dining in Boston. Mm. I can hear my heart beating. Let's dress him up. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. I my hate to wake him. He's better. You don't believe that, do you, Doctor? Mm -mm. I believe you can break him, yes. Bend him if for else fail, there's always Ward E. But you also stand a chance of breaking his mind as well. The mind is a terrible thing to waste, and breaking up is hard to do, and the mulch is good for your lung. We will continue the questioning another hour. Benedict. Arnold. I can't devote my whole life to this man, this one man. Oh, he wants to play the field, huh? To do more important things. Yeah, he's got a Botany 500 ad to do. Let me check that. Scene three, I enter up left. Attention all personnel. Tonight's movie will be streaming in space starring Dorothy Lamar. Neil, let's talk about Paul Revere. Well, their big hook was costuming, but after Cherokee people, they really... Dr. Ring ring off, Doctor. Let him rest for tonight. Give him another injection. Ooh. Too much of that drug is going to kill him. And maybe we could all get some rest. This is a movie. Try and do it. This is a movie on do drugs. It, Any questions? That's for him. Get me security. And some eggs, some holiday sauce, a toasted English muffin. Oh. Oh. I think he's getting better. You have lovely skin. Hi, Kiba. Gotta go. Oh man, I hope this hospital treats gunshot wounds and no shoes. Hey, where's he going? Hey, he has to leave the hospital in a wheelchair. That's the law. Yeah. Oh, no hall pass. I've had dreams like this. I'm sh gunshot and I'm really late for class and I don't have a hall pass. Oh, oh quick, in here, Mr. Fisher's science room. Switch out! Let's go buff our helmets, Bob. That was close. Too close. Is that all dresses? Murphy. Oh, brother, Murphy's a woman. No. But it's his size. Put the overalls in Mrs. Murphy's locker. Uh, uh, I want to paint you. Sort of. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. I just want to spread you on some toast. I won't tell anyone you're here. Mm -hmm. Help! Help! He's in there. In the lab. I knew that. Out of my way. I want Rockford in my office. Oh, excuse me. He's turned into a little light, sneaky. Come in. I want Maddox. This will be great. Watch this, Bob. Steve, Al, you know what to do. Oh, yes, sir. We understand. <laughs> yep, anyway. Fire. Right. 
how we make them talk. <laughs> Oh, they shot my spare turtlenecks. I think Harry O's behind this. Oh. We gotta go. Oh, well, we gotta get out. Oh no, they killed Snuggles! Oh. I can't believe that. No, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm afraid so. Oh, I'm afraid not. You're high. Oh, you're high. I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, baby, what am I? Hey, 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 come on, what are you two little metal monsters bickering about now? It's all Crow's fault. We were playing with our Topper's TV trading cards, and I wanted to maybe trade him my complete Love Boat set, which is worth a ton, for his half-finished Columbo villains and his crummy name of the game season two. And now he tells me my Love Boat collection is incomplete, because I gotta have a card for each time a star appeared, and I say he's high. Oh, who's high? You know how much this name of the game pack is worth? I'm talking James Ferrentino, Tony Franciosa. Hey, hold on, hold on now. I think I can give us a little insight into this problem. Tom, you only want his Columbo villain set because you've got Cameron Mitchell and his value just went up because he's in today's movie. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, and Crow, you're not much better trying to oh. scam Tom's complete Love Boat season one set. That uh, set's not complete. Oh, it is too. Listen, yeah. I helped him uh, tape it together. Look at his arms are inoperable. I gotta do it. See, all the cards go together to form ship's doctor, Bernie Coppell. See? Yeah. Oh, dickweed. Hey, hey Crow, come on, what's wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm just trying to play hardball with you, Servo. Come on, no hard feelings, pal. Okay, I guess not. Okay, I tell you what, you can have the whole love boat set and I'll forget about the other stuff if you help me finish my Sweat Hogs collection. Well, you can have Gabe Kaplan for free. Oh, yuck, I don't even want him. Yeah, I'm no. after Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. Hey, well, listen, I've got something that'll really make your mouths water. The complete yes, new Kids in yeah, Court really. collection, that's right. <sighs> Every mm -hmm. major child star who's been arrested, convicted, or is litigation pending. Check it out. Hey, ah. cool. Hey, hey, Servo, look, there's stats on the back. Charges, trial status, even lawsuits. Yeah, look, there's Adam Ridge from Eight is Enough. Hey, the whole different strokes gang. Wow. Dana Plato for holding up a video star with a pellet gun. <laughs> Allegedly, Crow. Uh, oh, no, right, that's right. right. Oh, there's Gary Coleman for suing his parents. Hey, wait a minute. Todd Bridges was acquitted. That card's worthless. Hey, I know, but listen, I've got the complete set now that I've got Danny Bonaducci, who was arrested for beating up a transvestite. Oh, See? wow. You got Bonaducci? Hey, where'd you get all this anyway? Oh, I got him from Gypsy. Gypsy? She said all she had were rabbi cards. No, yeah. I just traded her this Richard Basehart from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and she gave me the complete set. What? Oh, Gypsy, wow. you come here. You're right. Trading is easy. Once you... Know the secret. I'm Marshall Brodeen. Richard Basehart, I can't believe I got you lucky. Want. Gypsy. Here's where switching to Sprint will pay off. Yeah, no coin slot. This is a better world. Now, what was that number again? Number, please. Um. Number, please. Mm. Oh. A uh, woman's secret fantasy, please? I want to call Kate Kennedy. Uh, the senator's doing some offshore drilling right now. Ooh. Uh, Kate Kennedy, General R.E. Williams. Well, I have no listing for a Kate Kennedy. Mm -hmm. You've got to. It's a space center outside of Orlando. Well, I think we have a Tony Orlando, Orlando, but that's the only one. It's in Florida. Uh, she was on Good I Times. Oh, well, you mean that's the role. Operator, you speak English. There's got to be a Florida. You're not dealing with AT&T. If you care to speak to my supervisor. Your supervisor who, Mr. Stalin? Man, phone service is so much better where I come from. Vasha Strovia, comrade. Oh, Boy, that guy better find a hospital. He's wounded. His pants fit good, though. Oh, very nice cut. Mm -hmm. Hager's? Farah. Mm -hmm. 
The guys, perhaps. Dad and lad. Sansa belt, I think. Here's someone who can help. Uh-oh, that's Jamie Gum. It puts the lotion on its skin. Oh. <laughs> well, it gets the hold again. Hi. Been out there long? Uh, a few auditions for the Lumad, you know. Oh, this is your first made-for-TV movie, then? Chinese lanterns? Well, I was headed for Florida, but I guess you ain't got one of those. Those moons. Hmm. What about them? Do they always look like that? Sure, if you're hammered. Well, how do you want them to look? Well, they're they're supposed to look like Jackie Gleason. Odin. Third planet and sun. There's only one moon. It's called Earth. Did you ever hear of it? Yeah, I'm not going that far. Nope, never did. Well, I'm writing a short story about it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, distant planet called Earth. Oh, we should get. Oh, that was exciting. Ah, go. Huh? Okay. Whoa, 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 hey, wait, wait, oh. ho, ho. <sighs> Something's wrong here. Stryker, Neil Stryker. He appears friendly. In huh. point of fact, snuggles get off unstable, me. Huh? Paranoid. Oh. Extremely dangerous. And he's cute when he sleeps, but you know that. A malignant disease that must be eradicated. With eradicane? Treflan? Lasso? Something by Monsanto? Atrophy? Roundup? Horseman? <laughs> hey, look, they're in the Brady house. Oh, wow. Is there a question? Yes. He looks just like us. I thought he'd be different. Take my word for it. Neil Stryker is different. Stryker's a good cop! How many of us ought to know the truth about this man Stryker, that uh, he's a stranger from another planet? A strange land. Only those with top secret priority. Inner council members such as yourself. And for obvious reason, there was no need to alarm the entire planet with the true facts of the case. Oh, like Watergate. Um, sir, how come the Lander sisters aren't at this meeting? What facts will they be given? They'll be told to be on the lookout for an escape mental patient. One considered extremely dangerous. Yet witty and urbane. Yes. Young Is he to be taken alive? Oh. oh. He's to be taken. That's all, thank you. Now, I'll be in my office on Tuesday, but not Thursday. Have your textbooks and your syllabus with you. Boy, you know how many TV series would be wiped out if this room was blown up? Let me tell you. Cameron, I just wanted to say that that speech was sterling. I was moved. Stop reading over my shoulder. You, you got a problem? Talk to my TA. Yes. Get out of here. He could be captured alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yes, Doctor, that's a possibility. Cool. You could order it. Look out, here comes Jan. Everybody scatter! You don't understand, do you, Doctor? He's one man alone. One man alone. Go shoot yourself. Let me tell you something, Doctor. Before the perfect order, the history books were filled with stories of one man alone that changed the entire course of our great planet. One man alone wanting to be dictator. One man alone thinking he was God. One man alone feeling he knew what was best for all mankind. Boy, each, Reagan? Each of these men caused suffering. Disorder, and a lot of bad theater. Death. Yes, mm. that's true. But this is different. Different? How different? Mm. He's given us proof that intelligent life exists elsewhere in the universe. Mm. Benedict, doesn't that mean anything to you? Think what we can learn from this man. I am thinking, Doctor. Yeah, I thought I, I smelled wood burning. <laughs> Our society works. Uh -oh. Because we all believe the same way. Just ask Werner and We Earth. all feel alike. We all dedicate ourselves to what's best Go for the perfect order. And in turn, mm -hmm. the perfect order does what's best for us. 
then someone comes along and doesn't pay union dues someone with very different ideas with very destructive ideas do you know what mm -hmm. i've learned from this what? man doctor? oh oh you're talking to me i have learned that he's cursed with an absolute freedom of thought mm -hmm. he's cursed with an inquisitive nature an uncontrollable spirit no he's not gonna sing is he's he cursed much the same way most he's just of gonna just stipulate cursed before the perfect order burger fries and a shake and now doctor he's walking freely in our streets in our midst oh believe me doctor today one man Tomorrow, ten. In a week, a thousand. Do you think I look like Shatner? In a month, an epidemic. In two months, two epidemics. Believe that? No, but it was a nice speech. Doctor, I'm asking if you believe it. I do, I do, I do believe in spooks. I do, I do, I do. I, uh, do you believe it? Yes. Do you further believe he must be dealt with quickly, once and for all? Yes. Do you believe in little pixies? Then we have no quarrel, have we, Doctor? No, but I'm going to whip your butt in racquetball later. No. no! He needed that. Alice, can you make me a sandwich? Great macrame. Mm -hmm. You know, this book can Henry, to slide. You think he was being completely honest with me? <laughs> nope. Yes. How quickly some forget. How mm. quickly. Nice encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. The suffering, Henry. The suffering. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see anyone starve to death? What did you have in mind? Oh, sir. No, of course not. Moron. It's not a pretty sight. Something you never will forget. Jeez, Something you can't temp. Forget. Henry. Dr. Revere is lying to us. Hmm. He's taken Stryker's side, which only proves how dangerous a man like Stryker is. I think Dr. Revere needs a rest. Thinking. Have him eliminated permanently. Woody? Yes, I think Woody. Woody? Woody? Now put the lotion on your skin. Hmm. Boy, you know, I'm just crazy about these split level tutors around here. They're great. Really snappy. Funny how space looks a lot like Sacramento. Yeah, or Ojai. Hey, you saved the coupons? Sure, how do you think I got this swell truck? Hey. Huh. Hurt your hand? What? The only time I ever see people use their right hands is when they've hurt their left. Oh, the unclean hand. Yeah, use it yeah. all the time. Sprain my wrist to sew a little sword. Happened to me, I'd starve to death. It's exactly like our world, except they're all left-handed. Wow. I get it. I know what you mean. It takes some getting used to. Ah, and so does that. Yeah. Ah, it's a left-handed radio and a left-handed orchestra. Heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. Radio Moscow here. Boy, is that guy square. The Capitol Square. Yeah, let's put something different on the tunage. He's scamming a 104 play there. First senior deputy of the Inner Council. Hmm? To work for the perfect order is to live in harmony and peace with oneself. To live in harmony and peace is man's highest goal. Page two. To work for the perfect order is to live in harmony and peace Man, with oneself. Man, I hate oneself. it when people sing along. To live in harmony and peace is man's highest goal. Good day. Before our morning wake-up exercises, we have a special bulletin from the Department of Protection. A mental patient. <laughs> I'll get off right here. <laughs> what? The patient. Well, this is as far as I'm going. I want to thank you again for stopping for me. Not many people would have. Brown hair, uh, well. blue eyes. Thanks again. Striker may have been. All right. Striker is considered extremely dangerous.
17200. At least they've got a Barnes and Noble. Yes? May I help you? Huh. Uh, not without hurting yourself. Uh, I mean, what? Are you looking for something special? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for the new one, American Psycho. Do you have any books about our planet? About Terra? Huh? Yeah. Sure. About where we are in relation to the sun and the other planets. I'm afraid you'd have to go to one of the technical bookshops for that. Perhaps some of those near the university. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in the history of Terra, I've got several very good books here. Well, let's see over here. Well, this complete. one is the most complete. From the Not beginnings yours. right to the present time. Oh, wait, isn't that where Scarlett O'Hara lived? Do you have any with more pictures? Yeah, and anything not by Isaac Asimov? Mm, it only goes back about 35 years. That's right. But you said from the beginning. Oh. It's from the beginning of the perfect order. Oh. Well, of course, Terra had the history before that. You're too young to remember that. Mm. <laughs> it had its bad times and good. Mm. People seemed to laugh a lot more in those days. I was a woman then, And there seemed too. to be music everywhere. Yes. Remember the concerts in the park? Children pulled apart like fresh Don't bread. Don't get me wrong. Things are much better now. The perfect order has given us dignity. There's no war anymore, no starvation. We all live together in peace and harmony. There's nothing prior to the perfect order worth recording or even remembering. Except the Beatles. You're welcome to browse around if you wish. You won't find any obscene reading material in this shop. And why bother? Oh. Got to try and make sense. Hmm? I thought that was a book you couldn't put down. Oh, can I do anything? Got any Tama Genowitz? No, I'll be all right. I have a room upstairs if you get a rest for a little while. No one would disturb you. I'm quite alone here. Really? Wow. Very kind. Hello. Do you think you can make it? Yes, thank you. His name isn't Yoda by any chance, is it? Never mind the oboe. That always follows me around, you know? I think it's my... It's small, but uh, comfortable. Well. Uh, you can make yourself some tea in there, and there's fresh bread. Little boots. Well, I think I... Just like to rest a little while. Whatever you want. Uh, turn the magic Thank fingers you. on if you'd like. Man, is this ever great? I've got a place to live in a brand new dad. Now I'll trash the room. No, maybe not. <sighs> well. You'll be perfect for my experiment. You know, uh, that's not a Tiffany lamp, it's a Debbie Gibson lamp. Oh, oh I'm kidding. Oh, hello, Mother. I found myself a new roommate. Medical assistance, please. Oh, great, a planet full of tattletales. Uh, number W984. Where's Bert Canby? Huh? District 114. Yes, that's right, the old man. Yes. In the sweater. Yes, I'll wait. Oh, oh, that's exciting. Let's oh. go. Oh, for crying out loud. Last week on McLeod. Oh, and I think the exercise worked. Oh, is that a diaper over there? He's in there. I saw you weren't feeling well. I phoned medical assistance. Uh. They sent a doctor over. Uh, uh, you got a straight razor? I want to shave my, my wrists, yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, quick, give myself a haircut to trim the sideburns. Uh, oh, splash on some canoe. Oh, great. And if it isn't, little miss, I won't tell us all. I trust you. 
You've got to listen to me. Okay, I'm listening. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Sit it in. Go listening. Bite my hand once for yes. I'm an astronaut from another planet. A planet called yes. Earth. Of course you are. Mm -hmm. We were returning home from a long mission and somehow entered your gravitational field and were brought down. Mm -hmm. Go on. When I came to, I was at the hospital and the people there were trying to convince me I was back on Earth. Were they pink? Now, you must have heard something about an alien spacecraft being recovered. It's not something that happens every day. I heard that there was a, a special patient in room 420. That's him. Get it? And that Dr. Revere was in charge of the case. That's all? If I'd needed to know more, they would have told me. Because they're perfect. But I do know that Dr. Revere is a very fine man. He wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Dr. Revere kept me drugged and a prisoner. There, you see, I told you they were good people. You must be mistaken. Some patients do confuse treatment with punishment. The lucky ones. So you're telling me all he wants to do is help me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying Trojans with you dressed like that. And quit following me. Spread out. Come on, we look conspicuous. After all, you're a very important man. Hmm. And when you've completely recovered, you'll be treated as an honored guest. With savage A beings. welcome visitor to Terra. And I'm sure they'll be able to help you get back to Earth. Wasn't it Earth? If you'll only return to the hospital. They won't sense. hurt you. Mm -hmm. I promise. Ha. Ah. All right. On one condition. We stop at the dairy. You drive me there. I want to turn myself into Dr. Revere. And I want to turn myself right. into Ivana Trump. <laughs> Yes, yes, it worked. I'm going to score on an interplanetary scale. TV movie. Mission Impossible Music. Hey, it's the Doubleman Twins. What are they shooting through gauze? That's right, you can arrive on New Terror in style in the new Plymouth Fury left-hand drive option. You know, uh, they shoot a lot of Quincy scenes on this road, and up there, that's where Columbo lived. Um, I'd like to have children right away, if it's okay with you. Can we pull ahead. over first? The hospital's the other way. That's right. You said you were going to turn yourself into Dr. Revere. I lied. I turn. lied. No. I said turn! Like this! Oh. Uh, uh, that, that's nice, Mrs. Webb. Uh, I think you're ready. Uh, let, let's pull out into traffic. Uh, Mrs. Webb? Uh, that's, that's good. That was neat. So. I gave you my word that no one would hurt you. You gave me your word once before. That was different. I love his lie. Sir. I didn't know who you were then. That you're an astronaut from a planet called Earth. And that we're traveling north on I-96. Shh, now quiet. Grandma's watching her soaps. You believe I'm an escaped metal patient? Yeah, it's a made-for-TV Charles Grodin up there. You know, it would be so nice if we weren't here. And um, over here is where we filmed Dukes of Hazard. There's where Boss Hogg got in his accident. This road ends at Pine Ridge, the Honor Recreation Park. Pull up over there. Uh -oh. Now, pucker up, Buttercup. What are you going to do now? I need some answers. You're going to give them to me. Answers? About what? We'll start with the true and false. Uh, Tara, if I'm going to survive, i got to know what I'm up against. Are there different countries, governments? Is there any place I can go where someone will help me? Well, there's a photo mat up the road. 
Oh, great. It's Norman Mailer and Jack Henry Abbott. Now they're dead for sure. Hey, they're getting some action. Pull over, Earl. <laughs> Hey, uh, did Tara just move for you? <laughs> you rude, impertinent, wonderful man! Ooh. Can I call you? Uh, so does he get to keep the car? Like, what's she gonna do? Tell a squirrel? Maybe a woodchuck. Oh, yeah, I never thought Some of that. Some kind of vermin. Yeah. Perfect vermin. This is where the reunion is. Hey, funny face. Leave me alone. Big old ruby red dress. You're all I have. Just tell me where I can get some help. Back at the hospital. They tried to kill me there. Oh, it wasn't personal. You're mistaken. Is this wound a mistake? Are those men chasing me a mistake? Even well. if I am insane, is this what the perfect order does to insane people? Burn! The mentally disturbed are treated. They're made well again. They just have to find your witch spot. My own brother. What were you going to say? Huh? Uh-oh. What? Nothing. Uh, I didn't... Nothing, nothing about my brother. No, I didn't mean it. Nothing about your brother. No. No. Nothing. nothing. I Was didn't... Mentally disturbed no. Brother? I didn't hear it. They what? Treat him no. Like no. Well. La, 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 la. No. You don't know, do you? They took him somewhere for treatment, and you don't know where he is. Charlie Callis? Is that what happened? Yes. Oh. It was for his own good. He kept writing things against the perfect order. He touched them. Telling nerve. the people to revolt. His name was Bukowski. Is he still alive? Uh, that's just a hard question. Oh, let's just splendor in the grass. We gotta go, I think for sure this time. Really? Yeah, I okay. think so. Okay. Catch me. Ah. The radio. <laughs> what? The two-way radio. I left it on in the car so they'd find us. Come. Now, ladle in a heaping bag full of delicious Nestle Toll House morsels. And with Hi, Hi. Crow. Oh man, I had a nightmare. I, I dreamt Dro was taking me on a father-son fishing trip, and Mom made us sandwiches and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and cake, and we had just finished loading up the station wagon with minnows and yeah. stuff when I noticed Joe was wearing nothing but a Christian Dior bra and panty apron, and the really weird oh. part was he had a little bellhop costume for me, mm -hmm. and then the really weird thing was then he started screaming, no, Joel, I don't have the legs for that. And I screamed, and he said, oh, yes, you do. And then I, I said, no, I don't. And said, stay away from me. Stay away from me. He started chasing me around the stage wing, and a mom came out with a clown suit. Oh. And, and then I woke up. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm making a delicious taste treat, Crow. Four dozen fresh Toll House cookies. Mmm. Mm, let me help. Can I help? I want to help. Okay, okay. You can grease those cookie sheets. And don't use the butter. It'll burn. Oh, okay. don't, don't, don't. Hey, you know, Crow... Your little fishing dream reminds me of Ward E from today's film, except my vision of Ward E is kind of like that headache you get when you eat something really cold really fast, you know, like a popsicle? Oh, yeah, neat. You know, but I was uh -huh. thinking what or, uh, Ward E would be to me. It's like coming home to find your answering machine light flashing like uh -huh. mad, only to find out the message is, uh, if you'd like to make a call, please hang up and dial again. Yes, that's good. But you know, to me, Wardy is all about that nauseating feeling you get on the ride home from church from the Sunday paper that's been sitting in the sun too long. You know, that inky, oh, stick yeah, ugh, smell? Yeah. Ugh. yeah, but no, 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 no. Wardy is that gross feeling you get when you push down the garbage and something wet and unknown squirts on you. Good, ugh. fine, yes. But how about when you're having a salad and that bacon bit seems a little too hard to be a bacon bit? And so you take it out and it looks just a little too much ugh. like a tongue. Oh, 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 rich, creamy, oh, Ward E is like sitting in a public bathroom and someone turns a light out. Oh, boo, well, how about when you make a sandwich and you're this close to taking a bite when you notice the bread's got green fur all over the bottom? Oh, yeah. How about when you find yourself absentmindedly fingering a wad of gum on the bottom of a theater chair? Oh, hardened or wet? Oh, well. yeah, I can't I believe you guys person. started without me. Huh? Whoa! Ah, ah, get him away from me! Oh. What's uh, wrong with him? I don't know. Hey, say, Joel, 
Ever had to dig through the hamper for a pair of underwear? Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh we got movies already! <laughs> You asked for my help. You saw what happened. To get me, they'll kill you, too. Uh, 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 How about one year in the uh, morning when the boogers dripped on the back of your throat and you got <laughs> Don't ever wear that thing I'll again. <laughs> I don't even know your name. I'm THX1138. Who are you? That's pretty. That's my mother's name. Bettina. Dr. Bettina Cook. She's hot. I've got two stars next to her name here. Check it out. Citizens yeah. profile number DR73241. Oh, good thing they got the man from Uncle Computers. Uh... Open channel B. Whoa. Now they're IBM. Yeah. Hmm? Attention, Kmart shoppers. The blue light is flashing. Ooh. It's the Jan Brady phone. Hmm. Something important from Jan. I'll get it. He always calls when we're at work. Uh, hello, Cameron. Yes. This, hello. How are you? I was just asking you if right away, sir. you could pick up some milk and some uh, bread on the way home from no, work. No, sir. I won't be delayed. Okay. Then make sure you're home as soon as possible. That was my mother. We all have to answer to someone, Henry. Cops is filmed on location in this guy's yard. Oscar, I brought another infidel to see you. Oscar? Bettina. Professor McCauley. Huh? Who's saying that? This is Neil Stryker. He says he's an astronaut from a planet called Earth. <laughs> that's that's really oh. great. I'll get the sedative. What? Do you believe him? Yes. In a kooky kind of way, yeah. Well, you've convinced this beautiful child that anything at all exists outside the perfect order. Hmm. You must be telling the truth. <laughs> Butter there, you big galoot. But let's not discuss it here. I have a feeling one of these pigs is a spy. That one right there. Yet some call him oh, pig. I think of butchering him sometimes, but he might have friends in the inner council. Oh. In the council but I kid the pigs. Let's go on inside, huh? <laughs> Big room. You're late, number two. Hi. Do you have a two-minute song prepared? Be careful, we just vacuumed. Um, can I get you a Coke, iced tea, maybe some country time? Benedict. I'm Benedict. Good to see you. See you, see you, see you. See you. See you. My colleagues and I have I, 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 just been reviewing your record. record. You were very good in the crucible at Circle Rep. Exemplary. Exemplary. Thank you. Oh, no, no. Thank no. you. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you more than you. just thank you. my decision to name you my successor when I moved up to the tribunal. I have only followed the policies you yourself established. Hmm. You're too modest, Benedict. Oh, no, You've you're... improved on them. But there is a matter that concerns us. Your wardrobe. The Stryker affair. Oh, busted. I assume full responsibility for his escape. I assure you it's only a matter of time before he's recaptured. By time, you mean later this afternoon? Perhaps this evening? Or tomorrow morning? Hopefully sooner than that. Around six-ish, oh. sometime today. Then you have some idea where he is? Not exactly. But we do know he's in the company of one Dr. Cook. Dr. Bettina Cook. Only one? He may be forcing her to help him. 
Perhaps she's helping him without being forced. Uh, Ooh. Yes, we haven't overlooked that possibility. Say it, don't spray it. In fact, Q-ball-T. I was about to examine a citizen's profile on her when you sent for me. I intend to find out everything about the doctor. <laughs> I'm Switcher, sure you, you are one sick puppy. I told you there was nothing to worry about. Yeah, tough crowd, yeah, tough crowd. Um, I thought it was very funny, sir. That's any help? I just love meaty neck. Mm-hmm. The fact that he escaped will go in your record. The okay. small mark. But like a single spot <laughs> on a very white surface, <laughs> it umbrella. tends to be extremely yeah. noticeable. Yeah. And oh, like Sylvester. The longer this striker is allowed to run free, the more noticeable that spot will become. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to stop spitting on us? What was that? Uh, nothing, sir. I understand. I knew you would. Uh, stick it, Baldy. What was that? Uh, nothing, sir. I said I'd get them all. Go away. Oh, and see my tailor. He'll fix you up with some nice new clothes. Yeah! Oh. Same trees, flowers, it's like a dream. A made TV dream. But for many years, our scientists have discussed the possibility of a Terra twin, as your scientists must also have done. That is, two planets flung out from the sun at the same time, both of equal size and gravity, and orbiting exactly opposite, so that neither ever sees the other. Cooling simultaneously, mm. oceans forming together, mm-hmm. and the first germs of life appearing there as here. Two. It's two. Two. Two, two Earths in one. <laughs> exists by chance Work on in life, Neil. Effect and cause, cause and effect. Precisely. I and think he's so got it. life developed here on Terra, its counterpart developed on its twin. Hmm. For every mountain and valley here, its counterpart developed there. Yeah. And so on through the many long ages. And so ages. on, and so, so on, and so on. So what did you so call on. your planet again? Earth. Hey. Dirt? Oh, yeah. Earth. It's a very nice sign. <laughs> But I kid the other planets. <laughs> Kill him. Now everybody bring their suit. <laughs> we could skinny dip. <laughs> oh, this must be Tara's funniest home videos. Oh, it's out of this world with Donna Pesco and Doug McClure. There's an ad on Star Search in the lab technician category. Hey, it's the Miss Alternate Universe pageant. Well, the Rick D show, renewed again. I don't well, get it. Well, back where we started. She has to turn up someplace. All of her friends are under protective surveillance. Hmm. You mean the friends we know about? Well, what about the ones we don't? Like her poker buddies. Well, that's a possibility, Henry. One we can't overlook. I want that Rockford matter taken care of permanently. So you uh, heard about me. We heard rumors that an unidentified spacecraft had been brought down and an astronaut taken to the medical center. Well, there were two others on board with me. We heard they were dead and buried. In that order. Where? I don't know. No services or Or prayers? snacks? Some of our older people still pray, but very softly, I'm afraid. Kind of like nuns. The religion has been outlawed by the perfect order. Mm. How did this perfect order come about? Oh, sarcasm. All right. Well, it seems we closed our eyes for a little while, and when we opened them again... Reagan was in office. here. Can't you do something about it? What would you suggest? Well, if enough people oppose something... How can puppets... I resent that. that. Yeah, me too. Men like yourself. Toothless warriors. Get and dead shirts. young men brave enough to make their voices heard. Young men who disappear in the night. All record of their births and accomplishments destroyed. Mm-hmm. Their families forbidden to mention their names in public. Like my uncle? Oh, oh I did It's one thing to have died, Neil. But another never to have existed. And then there's uh, Ward E. The time tunnel in color. Oh, Ward E. So, uh, 
I hear they're filming Get Smart on this set. Hi. Now then, you were looking for something in a deck shoe, I believe. Cookie cool. Ah, I like what you've done well, with the Dr. place. Revere. I had jello today. Can you hear me? You realize, of course, that this is for your own good. Lobotomy means never having to say you're sorry. Were you out? Or anything else? You were tired, Doctor. You needed rest. And that chair is very restful, isn't it? Now, Doctor, you can help me. Mm -hmm. You do want to help me, don't you, Doctor? Oh, I do. That would please me to no end. All you'll have to do is tell me about Bettina Cook. You were her professor at the university. She took advanced training from you at the hospital. We know that she confided in you. Say. You know, of course, her loyalty to the perfect order. But would Bettina have any friends that we don't know about? I mean, if she thought that we were looking for her, is there some place she could hide? Well, she's got a tree for it. Come on, doctor. You do understand me. You're protecting her. Why? Hmm? Where is she? Where is Bettina Cook? Bettina Cook. Bettina Cook, Doctor. Bettina Cook. I heard you the first time. Audrey Barber? Uh, he's been like this ever since he started watching MTV. That far? I was told by your assistant he was no further use to us. I'm sure it's gonna be. What are we going to do with you? Uh, get me drunk? Is it possible for me to get back to Earth? Anything's possible. The fact that you got here in the first place proves that. Besides, Terra has a very active space program. Mm -hmm. Our crafts have great range and capabilities. Mm -hmm. Are they ground controlled? To Major Tom? Only during blast-off. After that, the astronaut has complete control of his ship. Then all I have to do is get aboard one. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> you make it sound like uh, catching a train. Well, there has to be a way, Dylan. Thomas. Hmm. Maybe there is. With my help. Oh, I can't let you risk it. Hmm? But you can't deprive an old man of the one pleasure he enjoys most in life. Oh. Outwitting the perfect order. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Now, if you could change places with one of our astronauts. Now, wouldn't it have to be right before the launch? That's when he has the most people around him. What about when he's suiting up? There's a guard outside his room and a technician helping him. All right, that narrows it to two. You'll only have about 30 minutes to make the switch. That's all I need. But even if you got aboard, Neil, could you handle the craft? I'd sure give it a try. You're cute. It would help if I could study some operations manuals. I have all of them. Hmm. In my sternum. Ooh. A little black box. TV? Small table. The living room. A bureau? Hutch? Neil. Neil. Right now? A television. Oh, yeah. Pat Sajak might see you, right? Ooh. This guy's a loon. Yeah. He drinks, he takes drugs, and he's going to get me off this planet. Yep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hmm. A little candy for Grandpa. <laughs> Ooh, that's good smack. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> Ever uh, speedball, Bill? Come on, I uh, want to show you my electric guitar collection. I wasn't always a toothless warrior, Neil. Yeah, I was Once a beat was poet, here. hung around with Bill Burroughs and the gang. And then a friend betrayed me, and I was sent to Ward E. I'm 19. They couldn't Ooh. afford to tamper with my mind, so it worked on my body. I heard that gets pricey. Mm. I have less than a year to live. I'm half Bondo. Mm -hmm. now, Neil, I want you to promise me you won't tell Bettina what we're planning. She's a lovely girl, a good girl. And so is the one who betrayed me. Both products of the perfect order. Now let's go have some naked lunch. 
Are you all right now? Oh, yes, we have a lot to do. There's a launch plan for early tomorrow morning. You know, he's a good friend, a little messed up, but good. Mm -hmm. Neil Stryker. Denture wearer. Astronaut, USA. That's my home. What, astronaut? You smell great. I'll never see you again. Smart as me. Suppose you want to phone home now. Neil? What? Oh, my name. Okay. She's got four tongues. She's a mutant. Come on, do I have to hose you off like dogs? Get in here. <clears throat> she makes love just like a woman. She takes love just like a woman, but she breaks just like a little girl. Well said. <laughs> When I'm with her, I'm in another world. Spooky chick, huh, Doc? Doc? Hey, Doc! You know, this is a visually compelling sci-fi flick, hmm? They must have uh, used the same production designer from Blade Runner, yeah. I'd say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the influence of Fritz Lang's Metropolis is apparent in every frame. Oh, clearly evident, absolutely. Yeah. Stunning. Well, they kind of remind me of Terry Gilliam's Brazil. There's a real kind of surrealistic, visionary eraser head quality. Ah, you see the shrubbery. Very dreamy. This is not a hotel, young lady. Your mother and I have been worried sick. Um, I was uh, visiting my aunt. Uh, yeah, my aunt. And uh, there was this thing, and I'm late because. Just let me go. I was going to call you. Yes, of course you did. We'll go somewhere else where we can talk about it. Uh, Steve, I want you to kill her. She's history. Mm -hmm. Oh, time well, to get That was exciting. Let's that was really... Oh, well, come on back. Oh, oh, sorry. Tripped over you there. And now back to Colossus, the Forbin Project. Fifty cents, please. Professor? Good afternoon. Oh, I believe the director left my new assistant's name with you, Dr. Alan Drake. <laughs> I'm... I'm sure it's on there. <laughs> the car, the tune-up, uh, the wind tilt's a little dirty. <laughs> What'd you say the name was? Drake. Dr. Alan Drake. Whatever I said the first time, you know. <laughs> you should have it Not there. Your uh, nothing with what? the... That's impossible. I was with the director when he told his secretary to see that you got it. Uh-huh. Want to take a look? Oh, I'm not doubting your eyesight. Just the secretary's efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> His credentials. Let's okay. see him. Uh, uh, this is a pamphlet on colon cancer, sir. Oh, I, uh, I put it through the wash. Uh, chocolate bar was in a shirt, and I have uh, 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 oh. anything of first quality anymore. Yeah, our security is pops. Hmm. I better check with the security officer. You do that. Oh, and while you have him on the phone. You better remind him that if we don't make our calculations, there'll be no launching tomorrow morning. Ooh, that hurt, Gramps. Ouch. This is really strict security for getting your film out of a photo mat, isn't it? Pay the price. Okay, three by five. Uh, did you have any duplicates or enlargements? Dr. Drake. Good. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Recent, right. recent. A lot of Chryslers on that planet. Yep. There's your launching pad, Neil. Neat. And that's the bird that will fly you home. It looks like a rocket. You'll see liquid oxygen tanks like that all over the base. Juicy liquid They're filled oxygen. from a processing plant out on the point. All of our space complexes are built by the ocean in case a mission has to be avoided. Smart ocean. Oh, and that's us coming down the hill. My wife the shot. The launch buildings down below. Seems a long way from the launch pad. 
Well, there's an underground tunnel that'll take you there. It's only a nickel. It's great. A nail? Yeah. I love you, son. This all makes me feel like a, like a young man again. I feel like a young man too, Bill. Um, I'm Dr. Drake. Huh? No. Go ahead, Eric. No. 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 no, 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 no please. No. no, no. Oh. Who's that? I don't know. Isn't that all that scary? Hey, does anybody know where the launch for? Oh. Now the astronaut will have his final pre-flight examination in this room. That'll be at 0400 and takes about 15 minutes. Uh -huh. Then comes the critical 30 minutes. Gotcha. Because at 0445, he leaves for the launching pad. Right uh -huh. behind you, sir. Or with any luck, mm -hmm. you'll uh -huh. leave for the launching pad. Me. Pen is down. Now, the space helmet will conceal your identity until you reach the gas Kimbo. And after that, no one will see you. And what about the tag? Gotta go over the pilot's check. Okay, and just... Ooh, struck a Jack Benny pose there. Once a junkie. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Is there another vial somewhere? No, just get a straw. Oh, it's at home. <laughs> uh oh. I'll have to get it, Neil. Otherwise, I won't be any use to you when you need me the most. Now you. You go over that checklist again. I'll be back in time. And there's milk in the fridge, and I made fudge, but don't touch the bars there for bridge. Uh, oh. Home is where the hypo is. Oh. Note to myself, pack more life-saving liquid. Go over to Corso's house, maybe he's got a string. Oh, oh there's Jamie Gum again. I'm here to put the lotion on his skin. Just stop that now, okay? <laughs> I think it's cute. Always somebody at the door when I'm about to shoot up. If it's not one thing, it's another around here. The grandpa with the golden arm. Mm -hmm. Oh no, whoa. They put her in a room with Ike Turner. My name is Luca. I live on the second floor. Mm. Benedict was waiting for me. Oh. oh. Eggs. What'd you tell him? Stop hitting me. That Neil made me drive him a long way from here. Mm hmm And then let me go. Did he believe you? He threatened to, uh... Yes? To take me to Ward E if I didn't tell him the truth. Mm. Instead, he took me to a, yeah. a basement room somewhere. Lec Valenza was there. I don't know why. He had two men there. Mm. They... Made me cook breakfast. They... He started juggling. He wasn't very good. Mm. I didn't. I didn't. There, there. I'll make you feel better. How about a guest spot on 10 Speed and Brown Shoe? Professor? Marianne? I have to see Neil again. I want to be with him. I want to tell him I love him. What's in it? I can't see. No. No. No! Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. Do I have the right to see him again? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, make you a nice big punch. Oh, oh sorry. That's not enough. I'm sorry, Bettina. I got nowhere else to go. I got Bettina. I wonder what she wanted. Hmm. Bettina, you're covered Bettina. with a light Bettina of Bettina. bruises. Oh. No, don't take the Plymouth. It's a rental. Oh. Gives me a headache, man. Careful with the Plymouth. I mean the Starduster. I, I mean the Terra Nova One. Forget it, Joel. Well, hi Tim, Joe, Bob. I hate Mondays. Hi Clark. I'm all on board. Hi guy. Oh, it's him. Dear Mom, I hate Camp Granada. Uh, 
soon. Time to put the lotion yeah. on the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, who ordered the passport to Earth? I want to have a look at his last telemetry record. I'll get it from my files. Will you set this down for me, Dave? Hey, thanks for including my character name, Steve. Huh? No, I'm not a letter. So, uh, good to see you again, Eric. <laughs> it's been a long time. Come on, I'll walk you outside. All right, now, we've never met before, have we? Uh, have you ever done magic before? It's time for, for a little trick we call metamorphosis. Well, my assistant, Eric, will... Uh... I promise. I won't tell anyone you're here. Good enough for me. Ooh. Oh, I wasn't going to tell, but now I am. You can bet it. Well, you just take your hands off me. You're hurting my wrist. It's okay. He's perfectly fine, folks. He's just under uh, hypnosis. I've seen this. Mm hmm It's an old one. Uh, Neil, are you oh. dumping me? We gotta go, folks. Oh, okay. Really? Come on. Yeah. Right when it gets good, I can't believe that. So, once again, Mr. Rockford has escaped our grasp. Tibby and I are very displeased, aren't we, Tibby? Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, boss. boss. Next time, no mistakes. I want him out of our way, permanently. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, boss. Yes. <laughs> now, as for you, Quincy's been nosing around a little too much. I think he's on to us. I want that meddler out of our way. I'll see that he takes a long vacation. <laughs> Uh, that means you're gonna kill him, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, now, as for you, I want Hooker dealt with. Hooker's a good cop. I know he's a good cop. Had we been on the same team, I think we might have been friends. He's a good cop, but he'll make an even better corpse. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I supposed to do with him? Kill Hooker! Oh, right, kill Hooker, kill Hooker. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Christy Love has been sticking her pert, pretty little nose in our business long enough, and I want it out. Our business? What do you mean by our business? Well, uh, you know, the things we do, like illegal things and things that people of a depraved nature do. Now, why didn't you just say that, for crying Well, out. it's implied. Now, I want Christy Love to take a deep, deep rest. She... <laughs> Needs her beauty rest, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me, boss. Uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, I, I was supposed to permanently eliminate Matt Houston and send Mrs. Columbo on a long vacation, so I, I flew to Houston, and uh, are we supposed to kill any of these people? Yeah, that's the whole point. You're, you're supposed to kill them all, I, th I think. Oh, all right, kill them all, okay. Uh, say, boss. Yeah. Uh, why, was I supposed to have a long talk with Petricelli, or was it Banachek, the Polish guy? And I didn't know whether to take care of Toma or Beretta. Oh, uh, sir, well, that's the same guy. Oh, no, 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 no. Wasn't Toma Tony Bizante? Well, yeah, until they moved the show out to L.A. and put Robert Blake in the role. Oh. Epilogue in oh. ten seconds. Well, you see, my little friends, it works like this. Epilogue in five, four, three, two, epilogue now. So you see, Rockford is out of our way. Hmm. Quincy is on permanent vacation, and Christy Love has taken a deep, deep sleep. Well, my friends, it's time to watch a film. After this. Here at Comedy Central. Can't wear costumes in the movie. It's not allowed. I love that sport coat. Oh, my heart. Oh, better turn back. Hey, uh, your lights? Lights? That little minx. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, I'm getting a headache. Car I think I want to die. I'll have a bear in the eye and a smoke in the boat can. I'm counting money on the side, Dad, Dad. Good. Keep in contact. Okay. Right if you get work. You keep in touch. Ah, well, we got a short one. Whoa, whoa. Oh. 
next week on Medical Center. I hate that. Hey, it's Billy Barty, all grown up. <laughs> oh, hi, Bob. Wait a minute, Bob's dead. Huh? Have you seen Stoner? No, sir. Well, that's strange. Switcher. Maybe he couldn't find the telemetry record. Huh. I may have a copy in my office. That's like him. Good thing they talk loud. Hmm. This looks like a job for TV actor. Hmm. <laughs> Are you decent? What? I'm Dr. Drake. There's going to be a slight delay in the launching. A so? trouble with one of the backup systems. I have the new countdown schedule. Go away. I don't have a line. <laughs> it works every time. It's so 70s. Yes. You've got to teach me that. Say, could I borrow your hat for the Easter parade? Going as a juju bee. Hi. It happens. We're both in the same line of work. Huh? I don't get that. Should I get that? <laughs> I well. Seventies theme show music. Seventies theme show music. Seventies theme show music. Oh, my heart. Oh, better go back home. Why can't I remember to bring that stuff? Professor McCauley. Professor McCauley. Whoa. Honey, you look like five miles of bad road. Yeah, People's Road 94. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that high five, but, uh... I'm sorry. I've got to see Neil one more time. Huh? Please, try to understand. He's a magic man. do 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 I understand. I love him, too. That's a good one. Very funny, sir. Uh-huh. Uh. We'll be there in a few minutes. You won't get away. Can you hold on until then, honey? I've got some crackers in my purse. Oh, shut up, Henry. Would it make any difference to you if he did? Well, yes, shouldn't it? I don't know. Maybe. If I fail, they're gonna need somebody else to take my place. Uh, what size shoes do you wear? I'm not ready, Mr. Benedict. Hmm. Hmm. Kill him. Hmm. Not ready. Ready. I said that same thing once. Mm. Me too. Well, you're right, Henry. He won't get away. Uh, take your hand off my leg, sir. Now I'll show you how a real astronaut suits up. He's gonna put all their clothes on. Mm -hmm. Thomas. I brought the veg. You have any trouble? No, but she did. Whoa. A little, it's okay. I'll make it fast. I'll keep watch. Hi, dear. How are you doing? Boy, you're oily. Benedict yeah. was waiting for me. He wanted to know where you were. Boy, they use a lot of Plymouth Furies on this planet. It's the planet yeah. of the Furies, I think. Go around the back. Tell the doorman you're with my team. Goodbye, Neil. Are you gonna be all right? Don't worry about me. The perfect order is kind. Gentle, thousand points of light. Just. Have you been hanging out with Wendy O. Williams and the plasmatics? Ooh. Oh, hi. Oops. Neil? Honey? Neil! Hey, I wonder if he's got any medicine for that. Oh, I doubt it. Whoa. Whoa. I just want my hair back. 
do with him once they catch him. Make him dress like him. Get the double-breasted suit ready. <laughs> Next week on Mannix. Last week on Cannon. Coming soon on Heck Ramsey. Previously on Beretta. Tonight, a very special episode of T.J. Hooker. This week on Masterpiece Theater. This, huh? Oops. That one's for Florida. <laughs> That one's for not having push buttons on your phones. They got him. Big group of them, just fire into it. Yeah, well here's a left-handed one. The most dramatic confrontation since Rommel met J.C. Heavy. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I got me an idea. A wonderful, beautiful, earthly idea. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is just like the end of Killdozer. Cool. Wow. Hurts, don't it? Ooh. Know what that does. That one's courtesy of Paul Revere, the real one. <laughs> Stop! Don't. don't shoot! You boss all up! Get him! Get him! Are you all right? Oh, sure. Of course I'm not all right! Took a slug in the arm. This is the biggest basement I've ever seen. What are they, an Aaron Spelling's house? Oh, goes on forever. The Rat Patrol in color. Oh man, clowns to the left of me, jokers to my right. Here I am, stuck in a made-for-TV movie with mm -hmm. you. Right, friend, prepare to meet Kali in hell. <laughs> What's he gonna do? I mean, there's really no way out. No. This is the end for him. Yeah, pretty oh. much just they take him and he surrenders and... A lot of sexual tension, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll give you that. Like Acapulco over here by the cliff. Think. Uh, 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 uh. Huh? Next week on MacGyver. Oh. Krakatoa, east of Java. Check yep. it out. <laughs> out of focus. Oh, hi, Rick. Looks like he just heard from Dean Witter. <laughs> yeah. Wardrobe. Nothing up my sleeve. Again. Get out of my way. The closer he gets, the better she looks. Well, maybe not. No. Well, you're still mad. Stop. You did the right thing, Bettina. Thanks to the perfect daughter, we have one great family here in Terra. A dysfunctional family, Destined to but... to protect each other. Destined to help each other. Destined to look after each other. Destined to be trapped in made-for-TV movies. My brother lives in Florida. Hmm? Gum? He couldn't have survived the explosion. I want proof of this. Yes. I want proof. Proof? Proof. His charred bones, if necessary. Mm. Charred bones. Yes, mm -hmm. One of the men found this. 
Stryker must have lost it on his way to the chemical building. Hmm. Didn't think it'd fit in my pants, did you? Hmm. Hmm. Can't see. Oh, he dropped the thing that's gonna drive the whole series. Huh. You know... Drop in any mailbox, postage guaranteed. Hmm. hmm. I had forgotten his name after the lobotomy. Ooh. Kind of ran her pantyhose there, didn't she? Yeah. It's been a crappy day for her. I tell ya. Calgon, take her away. <laughs> Water, the source of all bad acting. And yeah. how. And so, standing erect, he emerged from the slime. Oh, this looks like a good place. He's his own from here to eternity. Yep. Oh, now what is it? Oh. Uh. Ah! What happened? <coughs> from other planet. Thing crashed. Had right. girlfriend. Blue stuff up. Capsized. I had to swim to shore. Ah, uh, made for TV, huh? Joe, yeah. give me my coat. But not the good one. Hmm. We've been, uh, we've been camping here a couple of days. We're getting ready to leave in a little while. Hmm. Which way are you going? Uh, uh. up the coast. Yeah, so towards we. Stephen Cannell's house. You're welcome to ride with us if you want. But sit on a towel. Here, friend. Nice. Uh, my name's Mitchell. Cameron. James Mitchell. Yeah, right. My name's Peter Rabbit. <laughs> Tom Nelson. Mike Nelson. Come along. Does uh, that guy realize he's going to get a lobotomy just for uh, fraternizing with that guy? Oh, what the heck. So long, Chinese lanterns. Is it possible for me to get back to Earth? Hmm. Anything is possible. The fact that you got here in the first place proves that. What? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound the same. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. It's our old friend Carl Demmer again, isn't it? It's the big pretzel in space. Hey, you know, they're getting better with these holy grams. Yeah, wow, they changed that one back and forth. Music by Kraftwerk. It sounds more like Super Mario music to me. You know, this movie was originally titled The Stranger, but, you know, I didn't see anybody dying on a beach. It doesn't look anything like Kamui to me. No, I don't understand. Yeah. We're fine, fine, fine in the Autobahn. Autobahn, Autobahn, patom, pom, pom. Ooh, the credit, sir. Can we get out of here now, please? Yeah, Come on. Oh, okay. Oh, another day, another uh, food tablet. to lunch at the Polo, yours truly, Tommy Servo, executive in charge of production, satellite of love studios, etc., etc. They read that back to me, honey. Will you magic voice, baby? Dear Mr. Ovitz, you just uh -huh. don't know how to take no for an answer, do you? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Servo, mm -hmm. there's a Joel Robinson yep. and a crow here to see you. Oh, oh, send them in. We'll go over that letter, lady. Okay, what do you two pixies got for me? It better be hot, it better be good. Uh, did you see the movie, sir? Did you yeah. see Strana in space? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what'd you think? Dynamite, huh? Yeah. And what a series it'll make. A series? Oh, come on. Look, kid, I was thinking it was an okay pilot, but I just don't see it as a series. Please. Are you kidding? It's got all the ingredients. It's The Fugitive meets uh -huh. Logan's Run with Please Don't Eat the Daisy sprinkled in. It can't miss. Oh, come on. Look, look. Stranded in Space becomes a series. That lead has got to go. I was thinking of maybe uh, <sighs> David Jensen. Yeah. But uh, David Jensen's dead. Yeah. Oh, and that actor there was alive? Give me a break. Come on. Excuse me, Mr. Servo. Yeah. Just called, and I'm sorry, there are no tables available tonight. Oh, heck, I guess I'll just have to use the drive through then. Okay, David Geffen on line three. Geffen? Oh, I'm gonna take that call. Hey, look, Joel, press that button for me, will you? My arms are an operative, babe. Yeah, thank you. Say, Geffen, 
Hey, look, I'm very upset. Listen, I'm very upset. You assure me that Kevin Costner and Julia Roberts are all set to sign. Now you tell me they've been replaced by Bill Bixby and Joanne Wally? I'm gonna plot right here, you listen to me? I consider this a personal betrayal. I'm gonna bury you, man. Do you hear me? Bury you. Get out of my face. Um, you know, I, Mr. Servo, I think yeah. we should read this letter. Yeah, why not? Sure. Okay. Uh, dear MST3K, my husband is a big fan of this program. Mm -hmm. He is 52 years old mm -hmm. and he's an aircraft mechanic. He never misses it. Mm -hmm. His name is Bob. It's from D. Moore. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I love it. I can see Gil Gerard as Bob, the aircraft mechanic. Lindsay Wagner as D, his long-suffering wife. Oh, boy, it's beautiful. It's got legs, it's got heat, it's got everything. Sign him up. What did you think, sirs? Hmm? Ah, show business and mad science. Two very fickle, very unstable professions. You know, Frank, I may be forced out of my position one day and a replacement will have to be found. Really? Yes, uh, an assistant perhaps, someone next in line. Well, oh, what, we put an ad in the paper or something like that? Frank, you just don't get it. In all likelihood, it would be someone from right here at Gizmonic Institute, someone who's worked very closely with me. And then I have to train him in, right? Oh, Frank, Frank, I, I offer you the world and all you see is middle management. Push the button. Hey, is this suit coming out of my salary? In a presentation from Comedy Central. Now you tell me they've been replaced by Bill Bixby and Joanne Wally? I'm gonna plot right here, you listen to me? I consider this a personal betrayal. I'm gonna bury you, man. Do you hear me? Bury you. Get out of my face. Um, you know, I, Mr. Servo, I think yeah. we should read this letter. Yeah, why not? Sure. Okay. Uh, dear MST3K, my husband is a big fan of this program. Mm -hmm. He is 52 years old, mm -hmm. and he's an aircraft mechanic. He never misses it. His mm. name is Bob. It's from D. Moore. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I love it. I can see Gil Gerard as Bob, the aircraft mechanic. Lindsay Wagner as D, his long-suffering wife. Oh, boy, it's beautiful. It's got legs. It's got heat. It's got everything. Sign him up. What did you think, sirs? Hmm? Ah, show business and mad science. Two very fickle, very unstable professions. You know, Frank, I may be forced out of my position one day and a replacement will have to be found. Really? Yes, uh, an assistant perhaps, someone next in line. Well, oh, what, we put an ad in the paper or something like that? Frank, you just don't get it. In all likelihood, it would be someone from right here at Gizmonic Institute, someone who's worked very closely with me. And then I have to train him in, right? Oh, Frank, Frank, I, I offer you the world and all you see is middle management. Push the button. Hey, is this suit coming out of my salary? <sighs> 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 